What's up everyone, this is Mars Man here, and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. In this episode, we review episode 9 of the Halo TV series, and boy was it an interesting one. But I always, like, like always, I can't do this alone, I need the Mars Man crew along with me, and I have to introduce you once, once again, and to my left is Langella Kill. What's up everyone? And to my right is Haki. Hey guys. So just like we've done the previous episodes, we are going to give our non-spoiler review of the episode by giving our positives, negatives, and then our official rating so that everyone here, if you want to watch it, you can go do so or or you can stick around to the spoiler discussion where we will break down the episode and we'll talk frame by frame of what ends up happening and we'll give our opinions about what we think about it. But let's start off with a non-spoiler review. So. You know, this is generally, I'm just going to give a brief little talk here. This is the season finale. So this is the last shebang. This is the final thing that we're going to see before season two. Uh, and uh, and there's a lot of mixed reviews about it, but there also was some hype too. So I kind of want to get everyone's opinion. So Haki, I want to hear your opinion first. Last week's episode was also a mixed bag for a lot of people. Um, so I kind of want to hear what you thought uh, on this week's episode Give me your positives, negatives, and your final rating. All right. Well, this week, uh, back to action, at least for, again, the last, you know, 10 to maybe 15 minutes of the show. Um, and again, the positives with the show was when the action was happening, when Master Chief was in full gear and he was shooting any gun. Um, so again, biggest positives was that it was action. Um, <clears throat> Some story arcs got extended. Some, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna get into spoilers later, but story arcs got extended. I feel like a, co a few cool things did happen. Um, but again, like the, the the negatives were that it's, I, I can only assume that it's not following any storyline like at all. And I'm sure you guys are gonna get into that. I'm not huge into the lore. Uh, I know you guys are, but the negatives, like the things that happened were a little weird, but again, I feel like the positives might have outweighed a little bit of the negatives if I had to put it against all the other shows. Um, I'm going to give this a rating. This is, again, I'm, now I have to go back to my video game rating because <laughs> because the video game rating that I gave the other ones with action were sort of high. So uh, this one was actually my favorite episode. So I'm going to go with a 7.9, which is 0 0.1 above the I think it was either the third or the fourth, whichever one had no, whichever one had him stealing the banshee in the big action scene. So um, one point above that. Um, again, we I have no idea what's going to happen next season. We'll you know we get into that in another episode, but uh, at least a little bit more positive than negative this week. Yeah, interesting, interesting point, and uh, I can understand your point of view there. But Langelica, let's hear your opinion: positive, negative, and your final rating. Yeah, I'll piggyback off what Haki said. Um, big positive was the action scene. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about the overall show at the end of this one. Um, but I, again, I thought the CGI for the most part held up um, for the budget that they have. And this show is at its best, uh, which is, again, not a very high bar. I don't want to, you know, praise it too much on the overall standing of shows. But this show is at its best when there is less dialogue from the Spartans and more action with them. Um, and I do think, you know, you get a good portion of that, like Jockey said, 10 to 15 minutes, um, which really do steal the show um, for this episode. Um, I also liked Halsey in this episode. I thought that arc, um, and we'll get into the actual details of that arc um, in the spoiler section, but I thought it was a nice, nicely written, I'll give the writers actually a little bit of credit. Um, it was a nicely written, uh, you know, thing that goes on uh, for those that are gonna tune in and watch this. Um, so those are a couple positives to me. I think some of the characters, uh, again, the acting, there is some good, solid acting, right? It's it's just, they're written terribly. I think some of the actors did a decent job. The negatives, um, you know, there's there is some good stuff uh, that I thought came from this episode, but it feels like these writers and the directors, they just try to find the dumbest way to get to the final destination. Um, and for those that might not know what I'm talking about, we'll talk about it in that in the spoiler, but um, they, they get something good uh, or decent, um, but the way they get there is just so stupid. Um, so, you know, that was a big negative to me and it just keeps rearing its ugly head. Some of the 
very mediocre to bad writing um, for this show overall, and, and it continues in this episode. Um, oh, one final positive: Quan was not in, it. so uh, that was always a great thing too. Um, but my final rating is a six point five. Um, definitely better than last week. I know people ra- were rating last week higher. Um, I last week did nothing for me. Last week was actually last week hurt me <laughs> uh, watching that episode. But uh, to me. 6.5 i don't think it's better than the the second big fighting scene um you know that mass fighting scene with the marines and the spartans and the covenant fighting over the ark or the whatever the artifact piece um but i do think this is a very solid episode and if they had more of these kind of episodes the show would be more tolerable to be honest yeah and i mean i i, I, agree, I can agree with both you and your perspectives i think when i'm looking at this episode the positives i think the, the fact that, you know, a third of the episode was filled with action. And I'll even say the beginning had some aspects of it in, uh, with some tense moments. And even the middle portions, it felt like something important was happening the entire time. And on top of that, Quan wasn't in it. So it made the episode a lot better in, all, in the long run. But uh, I could agree that the fact that the negatives are really just b- bad writing, like, like Jellicill said. And essentially, it's just... This shows you a culmination of an entire season of just mishaps, and now you're just having to piggyback and kind of like 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 Langella Kill said, finalize something that in such a poor way you could have easily done like not have done, and it would have been just as good. And one thing I'll say though is that with the negatives, there are some cool things that they did do, and at least builds, I guess you would say, excitement for season two. And I think that's something that we all kind of discussed before. As as much as you know, I I kind of found this this uh, I'm not gonna read the tweet exactly, but I paraphrase it, a tweet where someone had said you need to you know keep an open mind when watching this episode. But understand that there is going to be more excitement for season two because of the final thing. We'll talk more about that. What I mean by that in the in the spoiler section. But I can understand what they're saying. But then I can go to the other camp and say they could have avoided all this by just having better writing, right? And I think that's that's like the other mindset. But with all that being said, I think I'm going to drift more toward what I had for episode one of this show, where I had it being a decent score for the action sequences because i thought they were really good and as well as having some good moments of non-action that had some good story arc telling and i believe last time i gave episode one was a 6.5 i'm going to say the same thing for this a 6.5 for me because of the fact that you know the action sequence was the best part um and it was almost like in complete contrast to episode one where the episode one was the very beginning where all the action happened this one was in the very end and the remaining parts are kind of filled with some side story um that in a lot of essence i didn't really necessarily care too much about with kwan um but you know in this in this episode it was the whole you know maki john stuff and spartan stuff and halsey stuff but the halsey thing i thought was probably the better aspect of this episode so i'm gonna drift along the same lines of 6.5 because i feel like they could have done better but this was on the same par with probably the best episode maybe second best episode with episode four being one of the best ones um out uh, you know out, out there uh yeah i mean no sorry episode five being the best one after four for episode five was the best one, I think, um, of, of my rating. So, uh, but 6.5 compared to a 7.5, which was in my episode five, that, that's not that far off. But yeah, I, I think this had some good moments here. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be the non-spoiler section. Uh, so if you want to stick around, watch our spoiler discussion. And I highly recommend it. If you want to go watch the episode yourself, you can. But we will break down the entire episode and discuss the things we liked things we didn't like as well as what we are looking forward to in the future um at the end of the day guys please make sure you tune in to more episodes of mars man gaming but if you're signing off for the night i'll see ya. but next up are the spoiler discussions all right guys spoiler discussions here and uh i think this is pretty interesting to my opinion i thought you know watching the beginning of this episode i was kind of get a little grossed out i had a feeling that some you know the fact that like I, but for last week, I, when I watched the ending of the episode and I see trailers of Maki, you know, getting out of there, I, I was sitting there like, how the hell is this one chick with no finger blade anymore get out of this place 
unless there's backup. And I straight up said to Angela Kill on the show, she's got to have backup. There's got to be a way that she gets some help there, and she does it. Uh, let's let's talk about it. First 15 minutes of the episode, Maki basically escapes with the artifact in hand, basically by you know just dipping and dodging through soldiers and then getting a, a, a pistol from one of the Marines who is a little like still wheezy from the whole event that happened where she turned on the artifact and basically did a shockwave. And she kills one Marine, tells the other one, take me to the hangar where the Phantom is and the Marine, you know, just a, all right, whatever you say, Maki, not even thinking of maybe I should fight back or maybe bring her to all their soldiers or something along those lines or whatever. Um, while at the same time, the Spartans are basically having a standoff where, you know, uh, Vanek is basically holding gunpoint to, to Kai saying, you know, drop, you know, just come in quietly or whatever. And John's trying to tell him the truth about, you know, Halsey and everything. And obviously he's, he's not like, I, I don't believe you. Like, I don't, this is crazy. And then Keith shows up like, no, it's true. I was there the whole time, all this stuff. And then, you know, then they finally realize like, and then this is my favorite part. John says, uh, you know, get the artifact, you know, we, we win the war or get, get to the hill. We win the war. And so, all right, we'll listen to you, John. Let's go after Maki. Kai says, screw that. I'm going after Halsey because she's trying to get away. Even though John literally just said, we need the artifact because if they get the artifact, it's all over for us. Or if they get the halo, it's all over for us. And Kai says, no, screw that. I'm getting Halsey. It was just kind of like a weird written piece. I get it. Kai has this thing where she wants revenge on Halsey and all that stuff. So basically, John, along with Vanek and, and Riz, go after uh, Maki. Maki was able to get on the Phantom. You would think that maybe, just maybe, the UNSC has weaponry or maybe jets, falcons, and wasps, anything to go after this freaking well, phantom. They got, they got EMP blast. I get it. EMP blast. So why is it that the phantom worked, but everything else didn't work? Like that, that, that's, that was where I thought for a second. I was like, you know what? Maybe EMP blast. But apparently the phantom is immune to that. Apparently the phantom is immune to EMP blast while in the artifact. I didn't know that. That's not lore. That's not anything I've ever heard of before in my life. Okay. So it just has that famous, just like a very uh, you know, cryptic drama scene of just showing John looking at it. I have to show his face because yeah, you can't, can't, have a, can't have a Halo TV episode without John's face showing. So he's just looking at it and just like, Katana, I need you now. Like, uh, like whatever. Uh, it's just this annoying thing. So at the same time, Halsey's trying to dip out of the place with the weird scientist. Uh, and so she's taken off. Kai jumps on it with one of the probably probably the worst CGI of the episode. To be honest, that CGI kind of looked a little off to me. Um, she jumps on, busting through there, and then one of the what is just like it's a continually dumb thing that Kai just never learns. Like Kai takes off her helmet, like you're coming with me, and then she gets whacked in the head with the wrench. And you're sitting there like Kai for the hundredth time. When you got donkey donkey punched in the face in the last episode, you don't think you would have realized that maybe I should keep my freaking helmet on when I'm fighting against people? Oh my God. So she gets hit in the face with the wrench, and I think this is honestly hilarious. She, Kai literally just, just grabs the dude and shoves him into the light and just instantly kills him. Like, I thought, honestly, it kind of reminded me of a Game of Thrones scene, if you ever seen it, or just, I don't want to say it, ruin it for anybody. Got, a guy just throws someone else in, and they just straight up just die instantly and just like it was just like this is so so ridiculous but the guy dies instantly kai basically is trying to go after halsey you know halsey gets into the life pod she gets out of there and now kai has to crash land the plane whatever she crashes down and now the last part of the segment's chief and cortana trying to find the planet and chief uh basically him and cortana figure out about this riddle that maki told them and they figure out where the artifact's going because that was their plan. And basically before they set off, because John, John says, you don't want to send Spartans or, I mean, you don't want to send Marines because all the Marines will get killed. Send me and the rest of the Silver Team. We'll take care of it. And the Admiral uh, Paranowski trip tells him, you know, you have all this stuff going on right now emotionally with you. And you need to kind of put that aside. You need to let it go. You need to not be John. You need to be Master Chief, right? And obviously everyone here is thinking about that. Like, yeah, you know what? 
you need to be Master Chief because this John character, Johnny Cheeks that you are, is not floating the boat with everyone here, which I think we're all kind of on board with that. Um, but it kind of gives you foreshadowing for the future, which if you know, we'll talk about that in a minute. But essentially, that's how the first 15 minutes ends. It shows John's getting ready, getting all of his armor on, and just in the background, Admiral Paranoski is basically saying all this stuff. And that's how the first 15 minutes ends. And I kind of want to get your opinion about this, about some things that you liked, some things you didn't like. Um, I'll just be brief. I thought the the part where I, it's hard to find something I liked necessarily in this first part, but I guess the only thing I'd say that was uh, was the good action, maybe tense. It's the tense part was the Kai going after Halsey. I mean, you knew that it was going to happen at some point, and Kai just straight up just showed how badass she was. She took down the plane, crash landed it, and then you know that I think that was the only I cool can't part. Land it. She, she blew it off. She blew it off. I'm out. saying, just <laughs> jumped out. But that was like a that's like a Halo. But they've yeah. been doing that since the beginning. Like that's been a Halo One yeah. thing. They've always crash landed planes somehow, no unscathed, come out of it. You know, they've been uh, doing that since the game's forever. Uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird thing they always did. But yeah, that was just one thing they did. Um, I guess that was their homage to the games because they never they didn't play a single game. But that was their homage to the game, I guess. Um, so hockey, I kind of want to get your opinion. What did you think about this uh, first 15 minutes? Yeah, so um, again, Maki being able to to just kind of walk through uh, you know the the whole Reach facility and just just you know unannounced take you know take the gun off one Marine, kill him, uh, and then just literally tell the Marine, hey, take me to your hangar. Uh, it was it was a little uh, no manipulation, nothing to uh, nothing really to talk about. It was just very strange how she just walked out, got into the Phantom. Knew exactly how to fly the Phantom, you know, straight into straight into space. So uh, I thought that part was a little weird. Um, you know, keys coming in when everyone was, you know, at a standoff. I thought was pretty cool. Um, you know, letting Vanek know, you know, that uh, Halsey kind of did steal everyone away, and I was I was there too. So again, that story arc, um, you know, pushed forward. Uh, I liked Kai when she killed that nerd, weird scientist person that kissed the dead robot or <laughs> was doing some weird stuff. So I'm happy that he died. Um, I just am, I don't know about her crash land of the plane. If that's in the Halo stories, like they, the they do that, they straight up do that all the time. Like that was one of those like little things, like in the games, like if you're playing it, you're just like, did Arbiter just crash land, crash that Banshee into the wall? Like, and all of a sudden he's just climbing up like, oh, I'm all good. Like, they did that like a bunch of times. That was a big explosion. Now, her jumping, like, I'm glad you, you said something because her jumping looked like the Hulk from like 2005. <laughs> like, just ridiculous like animation. It, it just looked, it looked ridiculous. But um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the scientist died. Halsey escaping. Uh, we'll get into what happens or arc, which you had both mentioned, and I'm a fan of, of kind of where that went. So um, the first 15 minutes, you know, wasn't my favorite of the episode. Obviously, the the last 15 to 20 were uh, was, but uh, you know, it, you have to start somewhere, I guess. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I you have to kind of build up to something. So, Angelica, what's your input on the first 15? Yeah, it was bad. Um... It wasn't good. It was, I think, the lowest point of, of the of the episode. Um, what was strange is, like, you know, like, Kai, when she saved Chief or John last episode, she was in full gear, right? Um, and then all of a sudden she appears without her helmet again. It's just like, Kai, you're doing the dumbest stuff. Again, like, gun at her head because she has no helmet on. Um, like, this is why we're here because of the dumb dumbness that we have to show each other's faces um so that was dumb and obviously maki i get it she emp blasted everybody but you know she comes back she's not groggy at all everyone's been shot pretty much on that emp blast except her and she's just walking through the reach facility it's supposed to be like a home base for the army um and like she just walks in takes a gun caps a guy um and the other guy takes her to the hangar where like you mentioned the ship is unscathed no no problem no problem at all this Uh, phantom is immune to emps immune i didn't have a problem with silver team breaking up and kai going after halsey because they also had to stop halsey who was trying to take off um and that was like again i i said the cgi held up for what their budget is 
it was definitely a lower version of their CGI. Yeah, kind of doing the Hulk running and stuff. Um, but, like, I thought it was a badass scene for Kai. But just that, again, like I said, they get to some good destinations and they just do something dumb, which was Kai coming in, taking off the helmet. What was the point? Like, she didn't know it was going to be Kai. She thought it would, She thought it was somebody else. She didn't recognize Kai from the armor. Which, which one you know? are you? You know what I mean? So, like, it just doesn't make sense. Um, but it was a cool scene overall. I do get it. People are going to be like, you know, she came away unscathed uh, with the plane crashing. But that's kind of what Halo is, right? I mean, we've seen that with Chief a lot. So, um, in the games. Um, but, yeah, that's my kind of my thoughts. Yeah, I mean... Uh... It, it, the beginning was a little rough for me. And uh, so let's go to the second 15 minutes. So this all starts with John uh, and, uh, and, and Jacob Keyes basically talking about, you know, Keyes saying, listen, uh, you know, I, 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 I can't I can't ever expect you to forgive me or anything like that. And, you know, if, you know, I, I also deserve a lot of flack for this. And John says, listen, there's going to be reckoning at some point and, and we all have our own reckoning we have to deal with. And. And then right into the next scene, Halsey's trying to escape, gets arrested by a bunch of Marines. Um, and then they just, they're like, they're just jumping around a bunch of different stuff. So John ends up leaving with the Spartans now go and try to get to this new planet. Um, at the same time, it shows that on the new planet, the Covenant have the artifact. The, and I have a sub note here. The Honor Guards looked actually pretty good. And the first time I saw the Honor Guards in, this, in the, the first part of the show, I was like, these honor guards look horrible. There's nothing special about them. They look like the regular elites. And I think that was the stupidest thing when you have a comparison to, you know, the honor guards of the original Halo games. They look so insanely like nuts. Like the original Halo games where they have like the red with the orange and yellow like highlights on their armor. You like those dudes look like insane. And you don't want to mess with those guys because they're the strongest guards in the game. And like in in the first part of the show, they they look like they're just regular dudes. In this in this episode, they look a lot better, which I'm glad because I was like, these are supposed to be the best guards out there. Um, then they transition, obviously, when they put in the artifact and everything. The prophets start to question Maki. You start to actually see some differences between the regret and truth. Like who were true? First of all, truth is the bigger character of all three of them from the game. So. In this show, they're making Mercy the bigger one, which Mercy is the older of the three, which is okay, fine. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, each one of them was different. You know, in the games, Mercy's the oldest one who's literally dying, like he's blind, like straight up blind. He's the oldest one. And he's like the more he's been around the longest, right? Regret is the youngest one. Is more brash, more like he's like I'm gonna start talking trash to everybody. And then Truth is the more conniving, concealed one who is in between both. That's a, that's what they're like in the games. In the show, you don't really know the difference. Like you, the regret is definitely questioning Maki's strip saying, "You okay? You brought us the you brought us the artifact, but you know, one, you took so so damn long to do it, and secondly, you said you're going to bring us the demon's head, and what'd you do? You didn't bring us anything." And she's like, "You're questioning like I I, I did everything you asked," and he's like, "Yeah, well, it's not good enough." And the truth is kind of saying something along the same lines. And Mercy's like, yeah, you know, it's whatever. Like, you did whatever you could do. Um, and then they ask her, like, do you want to, are you, what's your next plans now? And she's like, I want to go on the great journey. And they're like, uh. Oh, she, she asked them, can I go? Yeah, she's, great, like, she like, says, can I go on the great journey? And like, what happens to me now? Like, and they're like, do you, do you want to come on the great journey? She's like, I would love to. And like, oh, okay, we'll, get, we'll think about it. Like, type, one of those type of things. And um, what's interesting is, about this whole this whole thing and i'll get i'll talk more about it in the next segment too i think it might be yeah in the next segment but no actually it's in the it's in this one but it's a little bit later on but in this show they transition they they talk about the great journey as being a different thing like in this show they consider the great journey the journey to halo it's not the same thing as what the games were the games the great journey references when the halo rings light and it, it kills everything but in their minds it's taking them to the great beyond it's not the journey to halo right and that's where this show and the games are completely different and i remember at last episode i straight up said like i kind of was confused on their met reasons or way they're saying the great journey because i was like the way they said it sounded like it was a portal to another to like another dimension like to to somewhere else and i was like I know that they're trying to say it's like the great beyond, but like, 
well, how are they saying this? And like I said, it's I don't really agree. I don't really like that because it's completely different. It's not the same. The Great Journey is supposed to be transferring because they're saying, well, when we arrive to Halo, we'll be gods. Like, no, the Halo by itself is not the Great Destination. It's what the Halo does that sends you to the Great Destination. That's what the Great Journey is supposed to be. But they kind of changed it up. Um, so that's how that part. Then they transition now to where... There's a lot of like, uh, you know, they're, they're talking, they're on the ship and there's a lot of like, I really like the whole, this, I, I, sorry, I, I was going to, I jumped ahead, but Cortana tells John, you know, the original plan for her was she would take over his body. And that was what, Cort that is what Halsey wanted Cortana to do. And she ended up not doing it because she feels that, you know, she learned something by watching John and these emo human emotions that Halsey wants to get rid of. Cortana feels that they're super important. Which I thought was an interesting thing because Cortana in the games becomes more the emotional being compared to her and 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 Chief in the games, and I always thought that was a pretty interesting concept. So I think that was interesting there. But I really liked the Cortana and John and Spartans interactions. I thought that you know Jen Taylor as Cortana because she's the Cortana in the games is does great. She's probably the best character of the of this entire show is cortana she's the most stable closest to the canon and lily acts and the segment here is like i thought was exactly spot on to a lot of the side chatter that you would hear between cortana and elder spartans and and john and i thought they did a pretty good job here um then it gets this really weird moment where they're like they got to travel through space and they got to do a perfect line if they don't they're gonna be spaghettified according to cortana like they'll be stretched apart and all of a sudden, like everyone's freaking out, like they're just getting sucked. It looks like the, it looks like the, I forgot what the movie, like a, one of those space movies, just getting sucked to the wall. And then John's like, "We'll make it." Like he just gets through. Yeah, Finally, I actually didn't mind that though. No, I it was, was it was, it was. Teeth, like. No, but it was like it was kind of just like weird because random because everyone's like, oh, and then she's just like, like not even motive, not even doing, just like looking like. But if his helmet, I know, and then Vanek, Vanek, I just noticed this. Vanek says like, I, I like this one bit like three times. I'm like, dude, like, I get it. Like, sweaty, 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 I don't like this one bit. Like, but like, cheap. This is what I. I mean, you can keep going, but I, no, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying that he keeps his composure and just says we're gonna get, we'll be fine. Like that, I get, I get that part, but it was so weird because before that, five, like two minutes before, he's sitting there like, oh, he's like yelling into like, and then he's just like randomly just like, we're gonna get through this. With like, it's just like, put your damn helmet on, stop making noise, just save that one liner, and you're fine. Um, like damn. And then it, like this 15 minute segment gets, it's all of a sudden it's jumping all over the place. So they survive the plane ride, then it goes to Halsey in the interrogation room where Miranda's just like. Like, oh, yeah, you know, they're going to, the, you know, they, they have all these crimes listed for you. And there's order 76 or something or 71 that basically means they're going to kill her because they don't find her to be. They're going to execute her. Yeah, like they're going to execute her because she's too dangerous to keep alive. And it was kind of messed up because I was like, yeah, I know. I get it. I get it. You have mommy problems, but they're literally going to execute your mom. And you're sitting there like, I thought I'd be the one to tell you. Like, you know, it's just like it was kind of just stupid. It was like. Kind of one well, of those dumb things. Estranged. I get it. I get it. But like, she's gonna, they're gonna kill your mom, right? I, like, I know you're not like on the best terms, right? But the Holy whole did steal. The whole I, did but her, her but yeah, but but, but they're killing her. Like that's like she's your mom, and the whole point. And this is why I thought the only interesting thing about this conversation was Halsey just says, "Listen, I originally had kept you away because I thought it'd be for your better, best good, for your own good." But I see. It seems that I actually did the opposite. It made it worse for you. And she's like, "You need to stop chasing me. You're chasing a ghost." And I thought that was a pretty good line because essentially, it's like you're trying to chase me to keep to get my attention. That like I'm going to like accept you as like an equal. And essentially, uh, you'll never be an equal. But, but that's what she says to her. It's like stop chasing me because you're never going to get this. Like it's like. It's like, Jordan, like LeBron chasing Jordan. It's you're chasing a ghost. You're not going to get there. I'm sorry for any LeBron fans out there. Yeah, you're not chasing your mom but, telling you that? Let's, no, let's, but that's let's after go. the fact. That's after the fact. She basically says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I told you you're going to get killed. And she's like, well, stop chasing a ghost. You're never going to get it. Like that's the whole, like that was her response, and, and she had nothing to say because at the end I'm of the day, side, but so but the whole and then what made me laugh was that of course you know Keys has got to do his like 
the thing where he sits in a chair and, and, he's like, and in the room over. he just gotta do it. I just you had to do it one more time, guys, because you had that you had that see all those scene where you did it. Um and I thought this last part before they go uh to the last part where the prophets are showing how how conniving and, and screwed up they are. They they basically said you know, Ma we're just using Maki for the purposes of getting to the ring, and then once we get there, like we're whacking her off, like she's she's dead, like it, it, like because they like we, yeah we don't like humans anyway. Thank you, like thank you everyone, because the concept that everyone was defending that you know maybe the Covenant liked this one human and Mercy liked them, like no no that's a stupid idea, guys. Like the Covenant doesn't like humans. They're only using humans. And that's what me, we all, I think us three, had said this would be the only reason why that they should even have Maki in the first place was to use her for their own purposes. That was it. And thank goodness, the last episode, they finally say that's the only reason why she's even here was because we're using her to get to the artifacts. Thank goodness. Um, but all right, so that's the second 15-minute segment. What'd you guys think? I honestly thought this was a little bit better than the first one. I know there wasn't a lot of action, like gunfire or anything, but there was a lot of stuff going on that kind of intensified some of the story arcs. Like, for example, the whole... At first, I, I thought they did a pretty good job with the John and, and Cortana duo. Like, the, the back and forth kind of, like, sounded like the games to a certain extent. I thought the Cortana, the uh, the the Covenant was a pretty good thing because it shows you like, yeah, they're all e they're evil. Like you know what's bad is that for most of the show, if you ask a lot of content creators, they'll tell you that like it seems like the Covenant looks like the more of a good guys than the UNSC do, right? But now you're starting to see like, yeah, the Covenants are bad guys, right? That's the whole point. Like and and so like this that little segment with the prophets makes a lot of sense, and uh, you know it, the Miranda Halsey thing. Now I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of that. But this, that segment gets pushed. So I kind of want to get your opinions. Let's go on Kill first. What's your opinion on the second 15 minutes? Well, I actually thought there was some good stuff in the second 15 minutes. Um, you know, I don't want to go over every aspect again. Um, but I did like, again, I hate the concept of the Cortana taking over Chief body. Um, which is a foreshadow. Um, but when we go to the Halsey Miranda stuff, again, Miranda visited her when she was in prison and, and Halsey um, sabotaged that meeting by, you know, taking the contact lens, of, you know, the fake crying and the pretending that she cares about her um, just to get her, you know. So I kind of understand the extra bitterness um because Halsey is not a mother. Like, she just, you know, she she really... And, and she kind of said it in the previous episode where, you know, what are you willing to risk for for your goals? And she said everything. She Like, she doesn't care. Um, her ambitions are way more important than any connection she has. So for that, I'm not actually... I didn't think... I thought that was a good confrontation. I thought it was a little extra, but it, it wasn't bad. I, I don't think it was bad. Um, so that's kind of where I'll be on that one. Um, and then the covenant, right? I finally love that that we saw the true intentions of the prophet, or the again the mercy and truth. Um, and that mercy is like, well, you know, when we get on the ring, we're gonna, you know, she'll burn with the rest of them, uh, her species. Because um, again, it just there's silver timeline, and then there's completely changing like characters, and mm -hmm. the covenant believe they're a superior race. And so they hate humans and they're fighting humans. And why would they, you know, it's the dumb part of the Maki arc where it's like Maki thinks that, you know, she's going to, you know, go on the great journey with them. Um, and that like, they're one of, like, she's a higher up in the covenant. You know what I mean? So like, again, I'm just glad that we got more clarity on it. You can see kind of the conniving stuff. Um, and then finally, you know, I'll say about Admiral uh, telling John, I know I've been bouncing back and forth, but I wanted to comment on Admiral telling John that you need to leave John behind and be Master Chief. It, it was kind of like speaking for the whole community watching the show um, because John has become a tainted character. Um, he's not a very likable character to me. Uh, maybe it's to other people, but to me, um, he is one of my most disliked characters in the show. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so uh, Haki, what did you think? Second 15 minutes. Yeah, so just just real quick what, what uh, Langelico said. So, um, <clears throat> you know, for Halo fans, I totally get Master Chief. It's just like not Master Chief, you know. For people that, you know, never heard of Halo, they might like Master Chief. So, and I had, you know, texted this and we kind of talked about this, you know, off air. But, you know, I'm... I'm I'm just guessing that the first season was all to bring in, you know, non-Halo fans, knowing that the Halo fans would, would watch it, uh, make the Halo fans happy at the end, and then, you know, on to season two, and hopefully there's better writing. But, um, you know, for the second 15 minutes, I thought it was, you know, definitely more positive than negative. You guys talk a lot about it, so I'm just going to keep it short. You know, cut into three parts, Halsey and Miranda. Um, I thought the conversation was, was good. I thought Miranda was a little... Um, you know, I'll cut it in between you guys, you know, she was bitter, um, but she had a reason to be bitter, you know, um, to Chief and Cortana, I liked that, uh, you know, back and forth and even the little sly comments she had to, you know, just the entire silver team. And as you said, Marsman, uh, she's probably, um, if not the best character, the second best character. Um, you know, I, I like Soren. We haven't seen Soren other than being with Quan, so um, one of their biggest mistakes was, I think, not having Soren and Chief kind of team up, which which would, you know, be uh, better. And then, yeah, the the prophets uh, given their their real truth, you know, uh, about what the plan is with Maki and just the the great journey in general. So um, I thought the second 15 minutes was more positive than the first 15 minutes. Um, but then, yeah, the last 15 minutes, which we're about to get into, was was the best part. Yeah, so let's uh, transition right into that. Uh, last 15 minutes, first thing first, Silver Team drops in to where this uh, the Covenant being held up. I thought they added in the, the Sleeping Grunts, which I thought was a pretty nice touch because that is something you see quite a lot in the games. They, you know, and and then they're kind of jumping in. They're kind of taking out the Grunts as they're going through, uh, sneaking through this entire thing. And then at the same time, they're transitioning to the next part where... Halsey basically uh, in the interrogation room starts having like a seizure and starts dying and it was actually a flash clone I mean for a lot of people that was they were like what what the hell's going on and all of a sudden You start to kind of realize like oh my god, you know Halsey pulled a smart one on everyone And I think I got to give the writers some credit because I think that was a pretty smart move I think that was pretty interesting that they basically use a flash clone to you know, lure the UNSC and resting her, and even Miranda started. She realized too that she, that's not her. That's her mom. And then all of a sudden, like she's like, "Where the hell is she?" And you know, she got away with it. But at the same time, uh, it then switches back again to that same planet where you know the prophets are starting to put the artifact in, and it's the process is starting to get get ready so they can find the map to find out where the Halo Ring is. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, once once they touch the artifact, she starts like bugging out because he has to bug out every time they touch the artifact. The elites find out with, that they're there. All of a sudden, they start attacking. Obviously, Atriox shows up. It was confirmed based on the scan that Chief has of that brute character, the War Chief, that that is Atriox. That is Atriox in the flesh. And uh, obviously, we didn't really get any words from him. Um, but Atriox, if you don't know, is a main is the main villain from Halo Infinite and Halo Wars 2. The, you know, leader of the Banished. And uh, obviously, if you don't know, he was a part of the Covenant before he was the leader of the Banished. Uh, I'm not going to give the whole story of him. You go play the games. Trust me, that it, it's a good story. Since quick, make it quick, he was banished from the Covenant at some point in time. And that's how he's the leader of it. But there, this is the part where I guess Atriox is part of... The Covenant. Um, I'll say that's some good fighting scenes. Once Aatrox gets involved, he starts whipping ass like he does in the games because he's a war. He's a war chief, then, and he's pretty good. Um, uh, basically, uh, you know, he's kicking everyone's ass. Kai tries to help Chief out when fighting Aatrox. She gets her ass kicked. Chief tries to fight back. He gets his ass kicked again, and basically, he's getting his is like his helmet crushed because you know. It just more give him more of a reason not to wear it, you know what I mean? So, Maquis sees that he's in trouble, touches the artifact, it blows everyone away. Like, it just literally showed like the entire most of the elites got blown away, which was stupid, but that was another just one dumb thing. 
But at the same time, once she touches it, it brings John and Maki into the alternate realm where the ring is, right? But at the same time, it basically forces John to now like walk up to where Maki is and take a knee and like almost like he's like he's like praying or he's bowing to the artifact like all the other elites were. Um, and it was kind of a weird moment because it was I kind of thought it was kind of stupid to be honest with you. But OK, so that's happening. And obviously the Spartans were like freaking the hell out because they're like trying to fight everybody still. And John's sitting there taking a knee, um, you know, like he's in a timeout. And all of a sudden now everyone's like, you know, Kai's like, I got to get, I got to get John on his feet, you know, and, you know, Vanek is trying to fight off everyone. He gets knocked out. Riz basically gets, gets knocked out and, and Kai's like, I got to go stop this from happening. And Vanek's like, you got to wake up, wake his ass up. And then all of a sudden he goes, she goes over there, sees that Maki is touching the artifact. And that's what's probably causing John to freak out. John, and, and this was, I, I, I didn't really like this part, but John, was saying to Maki, you got to let go. And we have to get out of here. Like, we need to leave. And she was like, no, I'm not. And all of a sudden, she's bleeding, right? And you're like, uh-oh. Kai shoots Maki in the chest. And all of a sudden, Maki, uh, Kai has now become a top three favorite character in the Halo series because she did the one thing that I think most Halo fans wanted it to be done and kill Maki. May she would be number one if she just popped Quan like that, but... You know that's that can't happen. Or, this or a helmet more. Or a helmet more. Helmet more. Yeah. That's so a dumb helmet take off. So basically, uh, you know, she she kills she kills Maki because she needed to save John. She needed to get John to wake up because they needed help. So all of a sudden, Maki's down, and now you know John is basically, you know, is is struggling because all of a sudden Riz gets basically gets hit with a plasma grenade. She's dying. Kai's basically knocked out. She needs help. Vanek is is like down he need they need help and john's trying to fight people but he realizes i can't do all i can't do everything i can't save the spartans and the artifact at the same time because if i touch the artifact I, then i all of a sudden i get put in a daze and all that stuff so comes to the conclusion this is the big moment that changes a lot of people's minds he says all right cortana you can take over my body because you can do this if i touch the artifact I'll be frozen, but if you touch it, it it will be fine. So you can take over my body. And Cortana's like, I don't want to, and all this stuff. But then she's like, I can't. I don't know if I can bring you back, John. If I we do this, and he's like, Well, listen, I trust you. you. You'll find a way or something like that. You'll know what to do. And uh, so then he just passes out after he gets wailed by Atriox with the hammer. Um, and uh, Cortana does this thing where she just absorbs into his chest, even though she's already part of his head. It's not like you didn't need it to do that, but it was, I guess it was symbolic. I'm absorbing it to your, your chest. And now she goes straight up, like, ki killing Frenzy, Master Chief. She starts killing everyone. Like, I thought, honestly, you would you start hearing uh, J uh, Jeff Steitzer start saying all the killing spree. Like, all the... She was wh whacking everyone. Um, and, and then, like, you know, even Kai was like, you can't touch the artifact. And John picks it up, puts it on his shoulder... They were able to just get everyone out of there um, and get on the on the ship. And all of a sudden, Kai, even Riz is about to die. And, uh, you know, Chief just, like, takes the thing, burns the sears, the thing, just goes and pilots the ship. And then Kai goes up to him after because everything is like, you know, they, wow, they saved everyone. We got out of here. You know, goes over to John in the front and was like, uh, John and, and probably did the most Master Chief thing in the entire show. Just looked at her and just looked straight. Didn't say a freaking word. And you can already tell like exactly what he basically said without him saying anything. Like, like you know, and, and what's funny was that like they didn't actually say the lines that like John is gone and Chief is all that's left. But essentially you could you could you could basically see that by him saying that. Right. And then that's how this that's how the episode ends. And I kind of want to give my my own perspective first on this. I think we kind of we kind of um, this is the this is the issue with the show where you kind of look at this scheme this idea that where Cortana needs to take over John completely in order for John to be Master Chief, which is is, is outright wrong because one the show started with him being this non-emotional person 
that was sticking to the mission and had basically was kicking ass. Right? We all for, the people forget the episode started with him kicking everyone's ass. Remember with the turret gun whipping everyone's ass, all the elites, like, and Cortana wasn't even in the picture yet when he was doing that stuff. So this whole mindset that like he can't do this stuff unless Cortana's in control is where they kind of lose me a little. All right now, like I said, I, I I will go into more about this into the the season overall outlook, but this concept in the last part kind of gets me annoyed because they finally bring and, and you know they finally bring in what Master Chief is supposed to be like at the very end because of something that they added in that's not actually lore accurate at all. So I kind of want to get everyone's opinion on on this last segment before we get into the season overall outlook. Um, so, Haki, I'll let you go first here. What did you think of the final 15 minutes? Yeah, so, <clears throat> the final 15 minutes, all that did uh, was prove to me that um, they could do it. Like, they, they can do the action, and they can do everything they need to do to make the show uh, as cool as possible, you know? Um, the action, when they get it right, is fantastic. Inside the Spartan's helmet... With the with the assault rifle, um, with all the actions of him blocking swords, hammers, dodging hammers, um, you know, I, I thought the action was great. Um, it, it can be done, and again, you explained pretty much all of this. So I'm not going to go super in depth, but um, I'm glad that Maki got clapped. Like she needed to die. Um, yep. That was one thing that I feel like was holding Chief. Uh, back um, it, it's another thing that she's not the arbiter right she's she's not the arbiter and she will not be the arbiter right which is fantastic thank um, god that's the last time she's ever gonna have sex too so let's let's mark that up as a positive right um <laughs> yeah, and and it quells those rumors about you know would she be pregnant and would she have because oh, that was gonna be the really the bottom end worst thing that could happen yeah, so, so I'm glad just overall uh, she died. So Kai's up in there, man. She clapped the freaking weird-ass scientist, and then she kills Maki, right? So, um, again, the action's fantastic. The story, I felt, was going in a positive direction. Um, I thought, what I thought happened was I didn't think Chief just passed out. In my sense, Chief died. Like, like the, you know, Chief died, like his armor was cracked, you know, he saw warning, 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 and then... Uh, he like flatlined and his armor or the light inside of his helmet dim. So that's Chief dying for me. And, you know, uh, Cortana saying I might not bring you back, that just, you know, cements him just dying right there. Cortana going into his body, super weird. You know, I know that wasn't lore. I, I can imagine you guys did not like that part. Um, but the only thing that that made the only positive thing that came out of that was Chief was m almost more Chief than in the first episode. Like, he did not talk. He was all business. Saved uh, whatever her name was. Save uh, Riz. Yeah, save Riz. Got the artifact. Save Riz. Went to the ship. Piloted the ship. Kai talked to him. He just looked at her. Looked back. And it ended. Like, he was... That is more stone cold than, you know, even the first episode. But I, I get he's Chief and he, like, you know says you know sniper up there or whatever so i i get it but it was it was weird but i'm happy that there's no more maki and he is now not john for right now we don't know what the hell is going to have in next season which i know me and frank or me and langella kill and all of us were talking over text the bite the writing better get better right so uh if if season two starts and no, let's you know, let, let's talk about let's let's just talk about we'll talk about okay. our season overview yeah, in a second. Yeah. Let's okay. What's your feeling about the fifteen minutes before we jump into the season overview? Yeah, um, loved many many aspects of the fighting. Uh, only thing I didn't love, I mean, Atrox was a badass. I love that. I love the Spartans, their hand to hand combat, the gun play um, with the different kind of elites. That was all great stuff. Um, I didn't love, you know, and I'll get to what happens to Atriox with the plane coming in. That means Cortana could have controlled the plane the entire time. Yep. So why did she bring the plane in at the last minute when everyone was about to die instead of in the beginning? Um, but again, whatever, creating that tension. Hopefully Atriox better not be dead. Um, That'd be wild. That would be stupid. 
Um, but you know, again, they made it seem like that. So I'm not with, you know, with the way the show goes, you really don't know what direction that they're going. Um, so that makes me nervous. Now we'll get to the big part, right? Um, to me, it's not about Maki uh, dying, right? Because of Maki. Um, she needed to die because it was a ter- terrifying, terrible love arc between her and, and John that needed to be severed ASAP. Um, because to me, that was, I think, going to become even worse than Quan's arc um, if they had this long, drawn out love arc um, between the two. I really um, think it would have been really bad for the show um, because it didn't feel like they naturally are, they forced it on us. They threw it on us so hard that it just didn't feel right. Um, and that's taking away from the lore. I, I know we keep bringing up lore. I'm not a lore bandit, right? Like it doesn't have to be lore or nothing for me, right? But it just has to make some sense. And a lot of the things that they wrote makes zero sense. So again, that's why we bust on it. Uh, not because it doesn't stay with the lore, but because it's stupid. Um, but let's go to the thing again. They're frozen. Maki dies. You know, Chief realizes that he can't do this alone. And he's given the reins to Cortana. And, you know, you saw this foreshadowing. I didn't put too much thought into it because I didn't think it was going to happen. Um, Halsey said the best being will be Chief's body and Cortana's mind combined. They'll be the best of all of us. You remember her saying that when they were she was trying to do her coup? And so that's what creates. So John plus Cortana equals Master Chief, right? So I think that's the kind of angle that they're going with. And I don't love it. I really don't. Now, the end result is probably what's a good thing is that this is the closest thing to Master Chief to the video game, um, right? Um, so it's a silent protagonist. So again, it shows that they can do it. But again, this is where I talk about doing the dumb stuff to get to a good or final destination. Do they really have to have Cortana control him? Couldn't John just realize, like, you know, when Maki gets killed, that your emotions is what is kind of put you into this awful situation and let you become a worse soldier because of the emotional stuff, right? He failed to get the the artifact um, on Matripol. He f- he, uh, or I'm sorry, whatever the planet was that yeah. they were digging it out. Um, he failed to get that because of his emotions. And, you know, he was failing here because of his emotions. Um, so could it have woken John up to be, okay, I need to be the silent killer, the silent assassin? Um, but no, it has to be Cortana that's controlling him. And we don't know if John is dead. I don't think he is dead. I think he comes back. Uh, but this was kind of a glimpse. And I think, an oh, you know, a, a, a little... Um, a, a gift to the true diehard Halo community, the game people, for this last five minutes. I don't know how long it lasts. Uh, yeah. So listen, we let, from here, I want us to transition to this overall season outlook because I feel like what I'll say next kind of will carry on to this conversation, the next part. And when I'm looking at the season, I felt like this season was a waste of time. To be honest with you, I feel like you could have accomplished this entire season with basically uh, keeping to the lore of like the fall of reach. Because essentially what ends up happening in this show, this season, if you really think about it, John is more like Master Chief. less He's more Stone Cold than he was in the start of the season. You're now only the only group person you're introduced to is now Quan is now... The supposed new leader of the Re- of the rebels, which is stupid, but that's that's the only thing that gets progressed. Maki dies, so it's like Maki never existed, right? Essentially, right in this the end result, and the Spartans are basically the same, other than Kai um, being slightly different because of the emotional tag that's been released, and Halsey's now on the run. So eventually. You really think about it, not much has changed. People thought that, hey, you saw the Halo ring, that maybe, just maybe, that you would get to the Halo ring by the end of the season. I even thought so, too. But you didn't. You didn't even see the end of Reach. So that's going to happen, too. That didn't even happen this season, either. So essentially, there wasn't really much that occurred, if you really think about it. And the one thing I'll say about this whole thing, and I, I'll piggyback on what Legelica was saying, you know, if you're looking at the lore here, I'm not saying you got to be lore or die, right? 
But what they were trying to do was take a story from the original Halo lore, which is what caused Chief to be emotionless in the beginning, was in the original lore, one of his original friends, close friends since he was a child, with just like the rest of his team, had died right in front of him. Like he watched him die, basically to protect the rest of the squad. And because of that, he says, I'm going to get rid of my emotions because I'm going to protect all my friends and do what's needed to be done in order to survive and do what's right by them. And that's what a lot causes him to become the Master Chief the way he is. So they took that story and says, all right, instead of being like a brother that dies, let's make it his lover who he loses his virginity to. And then that will be what causes him to be. And instead of him choosing it himself, because I get it, he chose Cortana to take him over. But in the story, the games... He became the Master Chief, and Cortana was just an added person or added AI to help him become a more efficient Master Chief. Not saying that he couldn't do it himself. It was saying that she will only make you better because she could do all the other things that you may not be able to do, right? Doesn't mean that I'm I'm just too emotional myself, so I need to have this suppressant make me a machine. That's where it loses me a lot because that's not what the the whole character arc of Chief is about, right? And I think that's the biggest issue of the season. The season for me is there's a lot of flaws. A writing has a lot to do with it, right? The writing of this show is inconsistent and it's drifting too far away from what key things that make, you know, Halo what it is. Right? And I get in the hockey, you're right. They made this first season to be appealing to as many people as possible. Got some romance. You got some cringe moments. You got some memes in there. Some dumb stuff. Make everyone want to watch. And then season two is where you're really going to get all the Halo fans excited. Because you're already going to get the Halo fans like us to watch. It was the first time you're getting a live action Halo show on the market. But can you get more people to watch it? And that's what they tried to do with season one. And I get it. Maybe they were slightly successful at getting people to watch the show. But how successful were they? I really don't think they were as successful as they think they were. I think they believe because all these subscriptions that they are going to make a killing. But I have a weird feeling that a lot of those people might cancel their subscription by season two. Because they looked at season one and overall they're going to be like, this wasn't that successful. Um, now this episode itself wasn't a bad episode. But I think that overall, season-wise, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. And uh, I, I honestly, yeah, you know what? I I said before, I'll probably jump off the uh, jump off the wagon. I already jumped off the cliff, and I'm waiting to be splat. Um, I don't think this episode saved me, but I also think that season two, they need to either, either turn this thing around, but by the basically the way that they wrote this, it's going to be this altercation between Chief and Cortana, who's in control, and I'm kind of not looking forward to seeing that part happen because it's not going to be lore accurate and it's going to be stupid. But I kind of want to get your opinions about what you overall think about the season. I don't think it was successful. I think it was – it damages the character. It really was a sabotage of Master Chief in my opinion, um, and he's my one of my favorite um, – if he's not my favorite or one of my favorite gaming characters of all time. And you're sabotaging the dude, right? And you're making him look like he's horrible and he stinks and he's he's just like an emotionless dumbass, basically. Um, so, all right, Langella Kill, what's your general opinion about season one? Yeah, um, and again, you know, our comments are our opinions, and, and I know people do enjoy the show, and this is kind of this is kind of tough. The last episode gave me mixed feelings, but for seventy five percent of the show, I did not enjoy the show um it was kind of a chore to watch because we do this review um it wasn't something that all our the halo tv show series comes out today you know I, I, there was at no point did i feel that um and it's because again and i i keep repeating this it's not i know you like mars man keeps talking about the lore um which is good to know you know, kind of where it starts um i'm not a lore bandit like i'm not someone who you have to follow the lore for me to like it um i try to go in with an open mind but silver timeline you know whatever you want to call this you can't assassinate characters main characters and their biggest crime was the writing of john 117 
that's their biggest crime in this entire because you know they had some a lot of bad stuff Quan, Maki, you know, all that BS. But I could swallow it for the most part if the main character, the the guy who's supposed to be running the show, is as close to what you anticipate Master Chief to be. Um, and that did not feel that way. And so that's kind of where their biggest issue is. And I don't think, and I'll agree with Marsman, could be wrong, right? They can make us look foolish. I don't think they get to season three unless there is major change with writing. Um, I, now I have a little bit of hope there's a new showrunner for season two um, it's not the same one so the same dumb comment about not playing the video games at all even if that was true don't say that to the public because that was the biggest red flag and that red flag ended up being 100% right um, when, when they made that comment um, but they need to take feedback from fans and I hope the writing changes because it was C or B level writing yep yep I agree and Haki what do you think season one yeah, so um, I mean, we're we're pretty much all in uh, in agreement here. Uh, it was it was the writing. The writing was the worst part of of the entire season. Um, you know, there was a third of uh, the season was the only good part, and that third was when the action was happening. The first episode, the fifth episode, and the last the last episode. Um, again, all of those episodes, one, five, and nine still all had very, very mediocre writing to it. But the only reason why it was good was because there was some very solid action and the CGI was good. So whether Paramount or whoever needs to give them more money uh, for better writers, you know, more action. Um, like I said, um, Marsman, you uh, reiterated as well. The season was to get as many wa as many watchers, uh, as many subscribers as possible, knowing that Halo fans uh, around the world and true you know true Halo fans would no matter what watch the show. Um, I'm sure they lost some people you know mid season because the writing was just it was it was horrendous. Um, you know they got they, they got season two right so that, that's cemented. They got season two if they bring Chief in as master chief and they keep the action and they write as close to a halo game even though it's a silver timeline as long as they write close to any of the halo games and just keep it true i think they'll make it but like langella kill said if they don't they will not be making it after season two and i will not be watching um if they just go off the rails again you know um they, they killed off my key. Master Chief should be now closer to Master Chief, so they better give better writing and just keep the action coming because that's the only thing that's positive about the show. And, and I'm going to say this about the budget. Um, again, they're not going to be able to do action all the time, right, because it's so yeah. expensive, yeah. unless they're getting HBO money, right? Mm -hmm. But to supplement the, some of the sequences in action, you need to have enticing writing. Right? You need to have good character build because you can't do as much action as you want. The writing was so bad that the action was what gave this show any life. This show would have been dead on arrival if the action wasn't good. Um, and again, this is with not the high quali highest quality CGI. One I do want to give props to, and you guys can comment, major props to the designers of the costumes, the armor designs. Chief looked fantastic in a few times that he wore his armor. He looked like Master Chief. Didn't act like it, but he looked like it. The other Spartans looked good. The Marines looked good. The guns sounded, for the most part, pretty solid. And for 90 million, the CGI held up for the most part. But man, it just, you know, you see moments that this show could have been, I am not going to say great, right? Because to be great, you need good CGI and good writing going at the same time, right? But this show, this first season, could have been something that you could build on with that budget. They could have if the writing wasn't trash. And that's what it was. It was trash. I mean, even general fans. How did, at moments, I was bored. And this is not Halo stuff. Like, it was boring at times. I don't know how, you know, even if it's the generic audience, I don't know how you get enticed by that. No, now, I quick, quick question: Are we are we rating like the whole season? No, we don't. Well, we don't have to. I mean, at the end of the day, I I, I mean, 
this if, if i was gonna get i'm not gonna give a number just because it's hard to really do an average on everything so far but this is below average for me to be honest with yeah. you it's just below average and i think we all kind of can agree on that it's a below average uh show so far and uh you know, they need to make a turnaround here. And honestly, season two should be solely about the fall of Reach. Should be about basically Covenant invade Reach and just destroy everything. Um, and it should follow the story of Chief and Silver Team on Reach and what they do on that point. Because they should copy the book, The Fall of Reach, and just copy it. Just, just take the book, copy that completely, and do it on that. I think that would make life a lot better for them. They already have source material to base it off of instead of them having to create their own because clearly their writers have a inability to write things that are coherent and make sense. So follow the books, make your life easier. I mean, it's that simple. Um, but listen, I'm going to have a whole episode, a whole video about whether or not gaming TV shows and movies are bound to fail and how are ways in which they can not fail and give you examples of how they did well, how some shows and movies did well, while others did not. And I will be referencing the Halo show quite often because I will make a comparison to how the Halo show does it versus other games and movies have done it and see whether or not it matches a good show or not. So I will be having my own breakdown of this. But thank you all for tuning in to nine or actually close we had eight because we missed we missed one episode <laughs> but yeah, we had no, because we no because we had to i watched it and i, I stopped watching it because how horrible it was but thank you for tuning in to eight episode reviews and one episode pre the season preview we had and it was a it was an interesting run we had for these episodes a lot of fun we've had um, but we will be having more roundtables for sure, but we will be diversifying our topics to be more different things to be discussed. And then until next time when the show does return, uh, or if we deem another show to be on equal par to what we should review, that'll be until next time we Not discuss. A hard bar to Not a hard bar, but we will discuss <laughs> that. <laughs> we'll discuss that at another time but like i said before thank you guys for watching if you haven't done so yet please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content we really thrive on your support and we at marsman gaming are just getting started but thank you for tuning in until next time this is marsman gaming signing off peace